we will now look at uh, solutions to the similarity uh, temperature bound relay equation. By way of reminder, the equation is theta double prime equal to Prandtl number into m plus 1 by 2 f theta dash minus gamma f dash theta plus 2 e c f double prime 0 square equal to 0 with the boundary conditions that at the wall theta 0 will be 1 and in the infinite state theta infinity will be 0. We are interested in developing solution so that we look at effect of Prandtl number, we look at effect of pressure gradient and of course, also the suction or blowing parameter which is embedded in the solutions for f, f dash and f double prime. We look at effect of wall temperature variation gamma and we look at effect of viscous dissipation on the nature of the solutions obtained. Remember, I obtained already solution for Prandtl equal to 1, m equal to 0, gamma equal to 0 and E c equal to 0. That is the solution I presented in the last lecture. Now, I want to look at effect of very high and very low Prandtl numbers. And this is what you see for liquid metals, the value of eta remember at uh, 0 0.005 which is very low, low Prandtl number, the value of theta uh, max uh, uh, or the value of delta star is nearly 53.3 whereas, uh, for Prandtl number equal to 1 it was 4.92 as you remember. So, as the Prandtl number is reduced, the thermal boundary layer thickness goes on lower and lower temperature gradient. If I were to correlate this theta prime 0, it would be correlated reasonably well by this correlation n u x is equal to 0 0.564 Reynolds x Prandtl to the half. On the other hand, on the oil side, you will see Prandtl equal to 1 gives you this uh, which is the reference solution about 4.92 as the temperature boundary layer thickness, but for 50, 100, 500 and 1000 you see the temperature boundary layer thickness goes on reducing and I have given some values here. For 1000 it is as low as 0.495 which is 10 times smaller than the velocity boundary layer thickness which was about 5. And this is 0 0.6 before and at Prandtl number 100 it is just one fifth of the of the uh, boundary layer thickness for uh, Prandtl equal to 1 and minus theta zero goes on increasing with Prandtl number and a good curve fit which is 0.339 Reynolds x to the power of phi Prandtl to the third. But we will discuss both these solutions a little later. We want to study effect of m first of all and for which we will assume that there is no suction or blowing. We will assume that the wall temperature is constant we will assume that there is no viscous dissipation included. We are only including the effect of m along with that of the Prandtl number. So, the governing equation as you will see for uh, gamma equal to 0 and E c equal to 0 would simply be that theta double prime Prandtl m plus 1 by 2 f theta dash equal to 0, which I can write as d theta dash over d theta dash because theta double prime is simply d theta dash and that would equal minus Prandtl m plus 1 by 2 f. If I integrate this equation once, I will get ln theta prime from 0 to eta equal to minus Prandtl m plus 1 by 2 which is a constant into 0 to eta f d eta. And another way of saying it is theta prime at any eta would be equal to theta prime at 0. Uh, exponential of minus Prandtl by into m plus 1 by 2 0 to eta f d eta. If I integrate this equation once again, then I get theta equal to minus theta prime 0 0 to eta exponential of this quantity into d eta plus a constant of integration c 1, which I discover from the firstly from the boundary condition theta 0 equal is equal to 1. So, if I set theta 0 which means 0 to 0. So, therefore, this contributes nothing and theta 0 being 1 I get c 1 equal to 1. Now, I impose the boundary condition at infinity. So, theta infinity is 0 this integration will become 0 to infinity and therefore, I will get theta prime 0 which is of interest to me uh, equal to because that represents the Nusselt number equal to 0 to infinity exponential of all this 
raised to minus 1. Now, we will see uh, some special cases of uh, f. Since velocity solution f d eta is known, we can uh, evaluate this integral. The solutions that I show here have been evaluated for moderate Prandtl numbers 0 0.7, 5, 10 and 25, allowing for m negative. Remember, I cannot go below m equal to minus 0 0.091, because that is where the separation occurs. So, I begin with m equal to uh, minus 0 0.085, minus 065, minus 04, 0 0.33, 1 and 4. These are the accelerating flows. Now, remember h x will be function of x m minus 1 by 2, the heat transfer coefficient. Remember n u x is h x x by k is equal to some constant into Reynolds x to the half yes? and this constant is a function of parental number. So, what do we get? H x will be equal to k by x into u infinity x by nu raised to half into or proportional to uh, that. And what is u infinity? It is equal to c x. Uh, so, I get this as c nu by half into x into m plus 1 by 2, which is nothing but proportional to k c by nu raised to half x raised to m minus 1 by 2. So, remember uh, heat transfer coefficient, uh, 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 the pressure gradient has this effect on heat transfer coefficient. If m is equal to 0, h x will simply decrease with x. So, for m less than 1, h x will decrease with x, but for m greater than 1, you could also get uh, h x relatively increasing with x. This is something very, very important. This is for m greater than 1, h x uh, versus x. And for m equal to 1, h x will be constant, m equal to 1. Now, this is a very, very important point to remember that for stagnation point flow, heat transfer coefficient is essentially constant. You will recall that we had also seen that delta 2 star and delta 1 star etcetera, all the thicknesses are also constant for a stagnation point. So, let us look at these then the solutions for showing the effect of m at any one Prandtl number. Let us take Prandtl number 0 0.7 and then you will see that when m is equal to 0 for flat plate, the thickness is uh, 5.6, but when you have a decelerating flow, the thickness goes on increasing like the velocity boundary layer thickness. And when you have accelerating flow, the temperature boundary layer thickness also decreases as shown here. This state of affairs prevails at all Prandtl numbers that I have listed here. Now, let us look at the effect of Prandtl number at any pressure gradient. So, let us look at stagnation itself. So, you will see that uh, for uh, uh, Prandtl number 7, uh, minus theta prime 0 is 0 0.49. It increases to 1.03 at Prandtl 5, 1.32 and 1.81. So, what have we seen? As the value of m increases, the heat transfer coefficient increases. As the Prandtl number increases, the heat transfer coefficient increases. We have captured both these effects in the solution. Of course, it would be possible to develop a correlation of the form uh, n u x is equal to c times r e x to the half where c is now a function of parental number and m for parental number between 0 0.7 and 25 and minus 0 0.085 m uh, 4. You will see this will take the form of an experimental correlation uh, which can be used for further design work uh, at any time we wish and one need not generate new solutions every time by means of a computer. I now want to look at the 
effect of very high and very low Prandtl numbers in the presence of pressure gradient. So, remember for Prandtl number very much greater than 1, delta would be much, much less than 0 and therefore, you will have a situation of a velocity boundary layer like that and a temperature boundary layer just like that. So, in other words delta is much, much smaller than delta, much, much smaller than delta. So, for all practical purposes I can say that the velocity profile is really linear in the temperature boundary layer equation and that we have seen many times in our uh, earlier solution. So, in other words f dash eta within the temperature boundary layer will simply be equal to f dash 0 for that value of m into eta. Integration will give me f uh, eta is equal to f double prime 0 m which is a constant eta square by 2 plus a constant, but f 0 is equal to 0 and therefore, c is equal to 0. So, essentially I get f eta equal to f double prime 0 this the the into eta square by 2 and that is what I have shown here f eta would be approximately equal to f double prime 0 m eta square by 2. So, if I now include uh, this solution in this here which is an approximate solution to the velocity in this I can readily evaluate minus theta prime 0 and that is what I have done. So, if I substitute f double prime 0 m eta square by 2 for f then I get that this would simply transform to minus Prandtl m plus 1 f double prime 0 m divided by 12 into eta cube because this is equal to eta square is eta cube by 3, 2 into 2 is 4 into 3 is 12 into d eta is minus 1. And now, if I use the definition of this and that is what I will show you how to evaluate that integral. It is not a very difficult thing to do, but uh, we will nonetheless uh, do that. So, for the moment let us say let Prandtl m plus 1 f double prime 0 m divided by 12 let us say it is equal to a and define a eta cube equal to x then 3 a eta square d eta will equal d x and therefore, d eta will equal d x divided by 3 a eta square and eta square will be eta square will be equal to eta cube raised to 2 by 3 and that will equal x by a raised to 2 by 3. I get d x divided by 3 a into x by a raised to 2 by 3 1 over 3 a by into 1 by 3 into d x over x raised to 2 by 3. And therefore, our integral our integral is simply uh, 0 to infinity uh, exponential of minus a eta cube d eta can be written as uh, 0 to infinity exponential of minus x into 3 a raised to 2 by 3 uh, uh, 1 by 3 sorry into x raised to minus 2 by 3 into d x or this is equal to 1 raised to 3 a raised to 1 by 3 integral 0 to infinity x raised to minus 2 by 3 exponential of minus x d x. Now, if you recall the definition of, uh, of a gamma function, it is given as 0 to infinity x raised to n minus 1 e raised to minus x d x. So, in our case n is nothing but uh, n minus 1 is equal to minus 2 by 3 and therefore, n will be equal 1 minus 2 by 3 equal to 1 by 3 equal to 1 by 3. 
So, essentially we have integration integral itself is equal to 1 over 3 a raise to 1 by 3 is equal into gamma times 1 by 3. But uh, usually uh, gamma functions are plotted for values of gamma greater than or equal to 1 and therefore, we make use of the relationship that gamma n plus 1 is also equal to n times gamma n. So, in other words gamma 1 by 3 can be written as uh, 1 over uh, 1 by 3 into gamma 4 by 3 or that is equal to 3 times gamma 4 by 3. This is gamma 4 by 3 and therefore, you will see our integral can be written as uh, gamma 4 by 3 divided by a raise to 1 by 3. The integral itself will become minus theta prime 0 a raise to 1 by 3 divided by uh, gamma 4 by 3 because this is raised to minus 1 minus 1. So, this goes into the denominator the a goes into the numerator and this is the solution. The value of gamma 4 by 3 you can look up the tables of course, is about 0.893. So, if you look at m equal to 0 if I put m equal to 0 and recall that for m equal to 0 f double prime 0 is 0 0.33 uh, and use this equal to 0 0.893 then you will see a correlation uh, is possible for very very high parental numbers n u x 0.339 r e x to the 0 0.5 parental third. Now, I had curve fitted the solutions uh, exactly in the same manner here for oils as you will see here 0 0.339 r e x to the parental third. These are numerical solutions and this is obtained from our assumption that the velocity profile is linear. So, this kind of an assumption helps you to evaluate closed form solutions uh, which we can call as correlations, but you can do this for any value of m for which f double prime 0 m has been calculated from the velocity boundary layer solution. Likewise, let us look at the case of very low parental number in which case as I said the velocity boundary layer thickness will be solved and the temperature boundary layer thickness will be solved T B L and this will be the V B L. So, you will see for greater part of the thickness of the boundary layer u is in fact equal to u infinity and therefore, f dash uh, eta in the term is about 1 throughout the boundary layer throughout the boundary layer which gives me f eta equal to eta itself. In this equation for theta prime 0 if I substitute f equal to eta then I will get the relationship as that this will simply become eta square by 2. So, this becomes parental m plus 1 by 4 eta square whole thing raise integrated raise to minus 1. If you put this as some y or something like that you can do this carry out this integration quite easily and use the error function definition e r of x is equal to 2 by root pi 0 to x e raise to minus eta square d eta. Then you will see uh, and note that r of infinity is equal to 1. So, then you will you can it is very easy to show that n u x r e x to the minus phi which is minus theta prime 0 will simply be equal to parental m plus 1 by pi and that is what you see for again for m equal to 0 you will see this becomes simply parental divided by pi and as a result 0 0.564 r e x in parental to the half. The great thing about this solution is the following at liquid metals for liquid metals you see both the exponent of Reynolds number and Prandtl number is identical. Now, what does that mean R e x and Prandtl that is u infinity x by nu into nu by Prandtl nu by alpha the thermal. So, nu and nu gets cancelled that means in liquid metals metals viscosity has no influence and that matches with the idea that viscosity is really if its effect is confined to such a narrow region of the thermal boundary layer thickness that viscosity simply has no effect 
on the rate of heat. This result is very typical of liquid metal heat transfer, whereas for all other uh, higher Prandtl numbers, you will always get a separate effect of Reynolds and Prandtl number. But here, incidentally, this product, this is Reynolds number, this is Prandtl number, but the product Reynolds Prandtl is called Peclet number. Peclet was a French scientist and uh, Peclet number is of importance in liquid metal heat transfer. Liquid metals as you know are used in very high heat flux heat transfer cooling such as uh, uh, breeder reactors and others. Uh, so, these kinds of solutions are a great value and the constant is 0.564. If you recall, I will go back to the numerical solution that we had obtained. Yes, indeed, the, the solutions at very low parental numbers do match this correlation here and that is precisely where it comes from. It comes from this assumption that f dash eta is about 1. So, having studied the effect of m, the pressure gradient and Prandtl number, uh, high and low Prandtl number, under essentially constant wall temperatures and no suction and blowing and no viscous dissipation. We now move to the case of looking at effect of wall temperature variation. Again, I am going to consider the flat plate boundary layer, no suction or blowing and uh, um, and, and viscous dissipation is neglected. Then, this, then the governing equation reads something like this. Now, there is no closed form solution possible for this because of this additional extra term and I need to now uh, look at the numerical solution which I have presented here for very moderate Prandtl numbers. Wall temperature variation, a gamma positive indicates that the temperature of the wall is increasing with x whereas this indicates that the temperature is decreasing with x. Negative value of gamma indicates the temperature is decreasing with x. So, what do we find? Let us look at results at any one Prandtl number and you will see compared to gamma equal to 0 where wall temperature is constant, there is a, as gamma increases, that is the wall temperature increases in the x direction then so does the Nusselt number uh, or the solution which is minus theta prime 0 uh, increase. When the temperature decreases with x, uh, you in fact the heat transfer decreases and in fact you hit the situation at gamma equal to minus 0 0.5 where there is absolutely no heat transfer. This is called the adiabatic case. If you reduce gamma still further, then you will actually get negative heat transfer. Although the wall temperature is bigger than the free stream temperature, you will actually get a negative heat transfer. Now, I have allowed gamma to take any arbitrary value simply because E c is equal to 0 and we did say that uh, gamma is restricted to 2 m only when E c is included. We have not included E c and therefore, there. but this is a remarkable result that uh, when the temperature wall temperature decreases with x, you could get a situation of adiabatic uh, heat transfer or in fact even negative heat transfer. And we did alert right in the beginning that we are interested in looking at situations like this. For gamma equal to minus point, point temperature gradient at the wall is 0 is an adiabatic case although T w is greater than T infinity. Now, we can explain this why this happens. So, let us take our, our flat plate and the wall temperature is now uh, decreasing with x. This is the wall temperature. So, you can imagine at any x, the particles close, uh, close to the surface would arrive from a region of higher temperature, from a region of higher temperature. So, much so that uh, the convected heat into the layer, the temperature here could well become absolutely equal to the temperature uh, of the wall at that point. So, in effect, I get a situation where I have a, a profile which will look like that, which will look like that. So, basically, although T w is bigger than T infinity, T w is bigger than T infinity, I could get a situation where it is like that. 
if the slope is still negative, this is corresponding to gamma equal to minus 0 0.5. I could even get a situation which is like that. This is gamma great, uh, less than minus 0 0.5. This is let us say minus 0.6 as I, as I shown. So, you could get situation where the heat transfer will be heat will going in although T w is greater than T infinity. The situation arises because the fluid particles coming from the upstream region would be uh, hotter than the value of the wall temperature itself. Uh, so, these hotter fluids may thus inhibit heat transfer from the surface to the cooler free stream. By the same reasoning for gamma equal to minus 0 0.5, theta would increase beyond 1 uh, at some distance close to the surface and heat will flow into the surface even if T w is greater than. Hence, T w heat transfer coefficient will be negative. We verify these in the next slide where I have shown effect of uh, value of gamma on the predicted temperature profile. The curve here shows the constant wall temperature case. The Prandtl number is chosen to be 0 0.7. Therefore, the boundary layer thickness is slightly bigger than 5. Let us look at on the acceleration side. This is gamma equal to 1, this is 2, this is 4 and uh, you get steeper gradients and near the wall and thinner and thinner temperature boundary layer thicknesses as wall temperature increasing with x. But on the negative side that is wall temperature decreasing with x, you will see you get a shallower gradient near the wall the boundary layer thickness itself goes on increasing. At gamma equal to minus 0 0.5, you can see very clearly the 0 gradient and for gamma equal to minus 0 0.6, value of theta has at this point has exceeded the value at the wall which was 1. So, our temperature solution does indeed confirm what we anticipated. Now, we look at the effect of viscous dissipation and viscous dissipation uh, uh, typically is accounted uh, when when you have very very high velocity gradients d u by d y whole square or when you have very high viscosity which is mu. So, uh, I am taking here the case of Prandtl equal to 0 0.7 and assuming that the velocity gradients near the wall are very very high then the solution would be and the wall temperature is constant uh, there is no suction or blowing and the pressure gradient is 0 then the governing equation will be this and uh, because the wall temperature is constant E c would be simply this and theta is this. So, E c less than 0 implies that T w is less than T infinity, E c greater than 0 implies T w is greater than T infinity. So, the, here are the solutions to, uh, so this is 0 0.292 for frontal number 0 0.7 is the value of theta dash 0 with 5.26 as the as the temperature boundary layer thickness. When E c is positive that is when T w is greater than T infinity, you in fact do find an almost adiabatic situation at E c equal to 1.2 uh, and negative heat transfer uh, when E c becomes 2.4 and 4.8. On the other hand, when E c is negative that is if T wall is less than T infinity that is a cooling case, then uh, uh, you find that the heat transfer rate increases in the presence of effect of it. So, E c equal to 1.2 is a special adiabatic case is a very, very special adiabatic case and here are the solutions for different values of E c the A cut number. So, here the solution is for A cut number equal to 0, this is theta dash eta and the wall value is 1, you do see that at 1.2 the gradient is 0 and therefore, it turns out to be an adiabatic case and for 2.4 the temperature is exceeded value of 1 uh, and it has exceeded value of 1. So, although T w is greater than T infinity, you will get negative heat transfer for these two values of Eckert numbers. Uh, on the negative side, you see the temperature gradient becomes sharper and sharper. Because of the viscous dissipation, so at some point the temperature actually goes below the free stream temperature because it is less than 0. So, just as wall temperature is exceeded for positive E c, free stream temperature is exceeded. So, E c less than 1.2 theta is less than 0 at some positions indicating that T eta 
E can be greater than T infinity within the boundary layer and E c greater than 1.2 minus T t and H x is less than 0 even when T w is greater. Both these are effects of viscous dissipation due to mu d u device square. This kind of viscous heating is of great concern a uh, viscous heating effect in re-entry vehicles of uh, into the space from the space into the into the upper atmosphere when sudden increase in viscosity uh, uh, of the atmosphere would generate and and uh, uh, the, 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 the re-entry vehicle is hurtling down at very high velocities of, of the order of 5 to 6 thousand meters per second and you get enormous uh, velocity gradients very close to the wall. As a result, the viscous dissipation term becomes very dominant and you would generate large amounts of heat. And if the Eckert number turns out to be uh, bigger than 1.2, then you could well get heat transfer into the uh, reentry vehicle surface, a dangerous uh, and that is why uh, the, the re-entry vehicles are coated with ablating materials, so that when the heat transfer takes place inside uh, uh, and the surface temperature goes up, the, the material evaporates and carries away the heat of uh, which has been um, ingressed from the outside uh, into the wall of the wall of the, um, of the re-entry vehicle. So, Study of such effects is of great consequence in, in practice. Uh, now, we look at finally the effect of B f the suction and blowing parameter and I am going to consider again the constant wall temperature and ignore viscous dissipation, but I will allow for effect of m, I will allow for effect of frontal number and B f. So, we are looking at three parameters here B f, frontal number and m and I am restricting this to the case of gases because uh, these B f cases are of interest in gas turbine cooling problems. So, you will see in suction case when B f is negative compared to uh, B f equal to 0 which is no suction and I am looking at uh, flat plate solution. Then uh, uh, when there is suction there is an increase in heat transfer, uh, but when there is a blowing there is a decrease in heat transfer and you will note recall that B f equal to 0 0.612 uh, was the case where uh, separation occurs. So, we are not interested in B f equal to 1, but we are interested for m equal to 1 in which you will see that the, again the same thing prevails that the heat transfer increases on the suction side whereas it decreases on the blowing side. And this essentially occurs because the thickening and thinning of the boundary layers associated with uh, with suction or blowing. Suction thins the boundary layer and therefore, increases the rate of heat transfer. Uh, blowing thickens the boundary layer and therefore, lowers the heat transfer coefficient. For m equal to 0, B f equal to 0 0.612 is a very special case and that is where the separation occurs. You will see on the next slide, the graphs. These are the flat plate solutions and these are the stagnation point solution. Uh, this is B f equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.30, minus 0 0.51 and 2. As I said, B f equal to 0 0.612 is an adiabatic case. You will see on the suction side, we get very large temperature gradients and on the blowing side, we get shallower temperature gradients compared to m equal to 0. Now, if I were to compute this for parental number of 0 0.5 or 1, uh, the results are very, very similar and therefore, not shown here. So, with this I conclude my discussion on the similarity method as a whole and therefore, it is time that we looked at the summary of the equations and the boundary conditions. For the velocity boundary layer, similarity equation is this f triple prime plus m plus 1 f f double prime plus m 1 minus f times square equals 0, where m is the pressure gradient parameter. The suction and blowing parameter uh, comes in through the boundary condition f 0. The similarity conditions or the variables are u infinity is equal to c x raised to m, 
B f V w x u infinity x r e x to the half must be constant and the variable eta must be y under root u infinity by nu x and the similarity solutions are C f x m B f which is a function of m and B f equal to 2 times f double prime 0 r e x to the minus 0 0.5. Likewise, the temperature equation is theta double prime into Prandtl m plus 1 by 2 f theta prime minus Prandtl into the wall temperature gradient parameter in and the viscous dissipation parameter. The boundary conditions are simply this theta 0 is equal to 1, theta infinity is 0. The similarity condition is that the wall temperature can vary only as x to the power of gamma. If a cut number or uh, the viscous dissipation is present, however, gamma must remain equal to 2 m and the similarity solutions as a whole are uh, multi parameter solutions uh, involving pressure gradient uh, m, Prandtl number, uh, suction and blowing parameter, uh, wall temperature and E c that is what I have shown. And we have seen a wide variety of solutions of this type. It is not very difficult to write computer programs both for solving the velocity boundary layer equation as well as the temperature boundary layer. And I have already given you the method in the, in the last two lectures. So, I suppose uh, with that I conclude my discussion of similarity method. In the lectures to follow, we will take up integral methods of solving boundary layer equations. Thank you.